The roast of Shannon Tong, let's go. Yeah. This is just a terrible answer. This answer screams good structure. Everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can see today, I'm joined here by Simran. Simran is gonna review my past training contract and vacation scheme applications. I'm kind of nervous. I love how you said review. In my head, I'm thinking roast. So <laughs> the roast of Shannon Tong, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> if any of you don't know who I am, my name is Shannon. I'm a trainee solicitor living in London. My name's Simran. I'm a trainee solicitor for a UK top 20 law firm. I also do YouTube and I create content for aspiring solicitors as well. These were applications I wrote five years ago. I wrote these during my first ever round of applying. They're not my best work. I was rejected from the majority of these applications. Before we get into it, I just kind of wanted to share with you guys my reflections. They're actually not that bad. I mean, I'm sure you're going to tell me differently. <laughs> you're going to tell me all the ways that they were <laughs> no, terrible. No, they were, they were, they were. <laughs> At the time when I was writing these and receiving those rejections, I honestly felt like my commercial awareness was so weak. I didn't know how to improve it. I felt like everyone who was successful in securing a training contract was so intelligent and I just didn't think I could ever get the relevant experience I needed to help me secure a training contract and I just didn't really think I would make it. So it's interesting to look back now because I can see that they weren't that bad and I just really needed to refine my technique a bit more, have a better understanding of what firms expect from me when I'm writing an application. If any of you are in a position now where you've been making applications and you've received rejections, please don't feel let down by that. Nowadays though, one thing that I'm a little bit jealous of is now there's a lot more uh, oh, support yeah. and a lot Definitely. more like mentoring and you know, you're able to reach out to people back in, uh, maybe when like back in our day when <laughs> we're so old, but we, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like I could reach out to people mm. and ask for that. So it was very much a process of having to review my own applications myself. If anything, I think that's really helped now with drafting in general. So I'm really picky about what I write. Mm. Um, so the skills that you learn throughout now is definitely transferable to your future career as well. So that's yeah. a big positive too. We're going to get into the roasting now then. This first application, is an application that I made to a Silver Circle firm. The question was, please explain why you're interested in pursuing a career as a lawyer working in an international law firm. And I said, International commercial law allows for one to engage intellectually in complex problem solving. From my voluntary experiences at various pro bono clinics, I've enjoyed being able to apply legal frameworks to real world situations and seeing all the different ways a situation could fit into the law. For instance, at a legal clinic I volunteered at, I was able to explain to a client the different ways in which she could set up a company and point her towards the framework that allowed her to retain control over her company decisions but also enjoy the protection of limited liability. To me, structuring a business to meet the framework is like completing a puzzle. Overall framework is in place and one must find a way to make the pieces fit in well. The intellectual challenge keeps me motivated to continue building on my knowledge and improving my skills. I've also found that being able to make a real difference in helping clients further their business ambitions very rewarding and definitely something I wish to continue doing. With this answer, I feel like it's off to a good start. It is, it is. I've kind of like understood a bit of what commercial law mm. is about. There's not very much detail. Yeah, it, it just sounds very, yeah. very vague. With the first sentence that you've written, when you've written allows for one, I don't, I don't know, for me, that seems a little bit flowery. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to put that yeah. word, but you could have literally just written international commercial law allows you to engage. I felt like you could actually restructure your first paragraph. What you wrote was international commercial law allows you to engage in intellectually complex problem solving. Mm -hmm. From then you could have gone straight into an example. You could have mm -hmm. taken that bit, you started then talking about voluntary experiences. So for me, reading that from a kind of fresh pair of eyes, it was a bit like, what example are you trying to make here? Where the sentence where it says, for instance, to the end of that paragraph, you could have moved that up and then for like pro bono clinics, maybe take that out because it would have been very obvious, a legal clinic that's pro bono. Mm -hmm. You didn't need to explain that. That's one way in which you could have made your writing a bit more concise. One of my, I guess, pet peeves, maybe an ick when I read applications <laughs> is when people write, I was able to explain. You could have literally just written, I explained. Yeah. I also felt there were certain places, no offense. I feel really bad, Shannon. No, uh, don't at all. <laughs> there were some moments where I felt like it was very cliche. Mm -hmm. So the whole point about completing a puzzle, yeah. I was just a bit like, eh. I'm just not using the word count very well at all by having all of this additional words that don't add uh, anything. Don't add anything, yeah. And I think this is quite a common mistake when you first start writing applications 
situations is not knowing the best way to be concise. Yeah, you definitely could have made it a lot more concise. Another thing I thought when I looked back at this is I'm really only making one point yeah. in my answer. Yeah. When I look at my more successful applications, I make at least two, if not three. So You're doing well so far with handling the roast. <laughs> I'm leaving my tears for later. When you leave, I'll cry my eyes out. <laughs> Jokes aside, I think I cried enough when I didn't get through yeah. to be crying now. <laughs> this next one was an application to a magic circle fan. Out of all the questions and answers included in this, this is the one I'm cringe the most on when I look back at. I just completely missed the point here. Yeah, that's what I was gonna <laughs> say. The question was, of the firm's six practice areas, please tell us which is your preferred area of law and why? I answered, I'm currently interested in risk management and compliance. All businesses operate within the relevant regulatory requirements. However, both complex legal requirements and business products are constantly changing, meaning how businesses approach their risk management must evolve with time. If we take the insurance market as an example, the UK government has recently drafted new regulations requiring businesses to rework their ILS vehicles to take advantage and expand under the regulations. Product-wise, innovations such as the use of insure tech may not easily fit into these existing frameworks and how each innovation can be adapted to fit is unique. This is just a terrible answer for the firm that I applied for. Basically, you know, magic circle firms, from what I know anyway, they kind of specialize in corporate deals, M&A, banking and finance. And I've said my favorite practice area is just not really something they specialize in yeah. at all. So I think this is a massive, massive mistake. It's, I think it's that, but say if we were to take the example of this actually being a practice area in the firm, the content that you've got is good, but it just does not relate to the question. The question mm. asks, for example, uh, which is your preferred practice area and why? Nowhere in your answer have you displayed an interest You've just tried to talk about no links to myself yeah, and my experience. Yeah, and I think that's a really big thing to do in your applications as well. Really link it to why you're actually interested in that area. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna, like you said, you talked about insure tech. You 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 brought in a bit of commercial awareness, which is great. But linking that commercial awareness to yourself and why that interests you. Maybe it's something that you've experienced. You could even be, I don't know, taking out a car policy, for example, if you're gonna mm -hmm. link like link it to insurance, and then link that to how how you personally like I don't know experience something when you're getting out of car policy that's the most random example but you don't have to be like a paralegal for example to be able to think of experiences in order to link your commercial awareness to that uh, there's two big things here and um sorry to change <laughs> Shannon yeah <laughs> you I missed the mark at the magic bit, yeah. circle firm no I think linking to yourself is something you can do that can make your application so much stronger. Yeah. It just is so much more personal. It shows you've given more in-depth thought to why you'd be a good fit at that firm or in that practice area. And I think it's one of the harder things to do mm. when you first start writing applications. I think what you need to do if you guys are struggling with this is you can go a bit more out of the box. You can really analyze what is something that I do in my life that has any kind of link with this firm or whatever topic you're talking about use your own personal experiences as evidence it's like when you write an essay you know you make a point and then you need to evidence that point next one it was an application i made to a large city firm and the question was what drives you and makes you thrive you can tell us about extracurricular interests activities and responsibilities so i said in 2015, I started powerlifting, focusing on becoming competitive nationally. To continue reaching new personal bests, I trained four times a week, remaining consistent and disciplined. As a result of my clear focus, I was able to win silver at my first ever competition. Powerlifting has been very rewarding, not just because of my progress in physical strength, but more so due to what I've taken away from the sport in terms of work ethic and mentality. Having applied this mindset, I've improved in other areas of my life, such as attaining a well-rounded set of grades in my final year. I now know that I'm capable of pushing myself to the limit, both physically and mentally. With a newfound confidence, I volunteered to become a student advisor at a legal clinic, balancing this role alongside my training and studies. Through this new challenge, I've achieved a lot of personal development, learning how to manage client relationships and giving commercially sound legal advice. I don't think I really answered the question. It asked me what drives me and makes me thrive. <laughs> and I've just talked about it feels evidence like, of why I'm motivated. Yeah. I mean, I'm not accusing you of anything, but it sounds like a copy and paste yeah. answer. Was it copy <laughs> and paste? That's what it was, yeah. Damn, I'm not even, I'm not even grad recruitment. <laughs> so that, that just goes to show how obvious it can be. It just didn't relate to the question. In all honesty, the example though was a good one. I, like, I tried to look through this um, question, this answer, 
and see whether you'd ever use the words driven, like this drives mm -hmm. me or this makes me like thrive. Yeah. And none of those words were used. And I think that's one really important thing to do in your applications to really make sure that you're answering a question. Use the same words that the question has provided to you just to really highlight your grad recruitment. Yeah, I'm answering the question directly here. After this round, something I did different was I drafted every answer from scratch. At the time you draft an application, it can be quite difficult to notice you're doing that because you're sitting there for ages. I probably worked on this answer for, for a long time. Like it's not just yeah. I just pasted it and left it. When you have put that amount of effort in, it's hard to see it more objectively and it's hard to spot something like this even though it was so mm. obvious to somebody <laughs> else who was reading it takeaway points is draft your answers from scratch take breaks take like two days break and come back and review it and ask people to help you review your work and you don't need someone who is a law student or someone mm. who is an aspiring solicitor to be able to do that or someone in the legal profession you can give this your applications to your family and friends and just ask them the question of is my spelling and grammar correct is my punctuation all right Am I actually answering the question here? Do you think my writing's concise? You know, you don't need to speak to someone in the legal field to be able to do that. At the end of the day, grad recruitment, they're not lawyers either. You'd want to be able to write an application that someone who doesn't study law, isn't a legal professional, would understand as well. This final one is one where I finally made it through to the next stage. So I wrote this kind of six months after I wrote the other ones we've just gone through. And this was an application to a top 100 national firm. The question was, describe a problem you had to solve and how you went about solving it. And I said, Moving from Hong Kong to London to begin university was a daunting experience. Having never been to London before, I had no idea for how to prepare. I also had no connections in the UK at the time, so I had no support system for when I arrived. Knowing that many students face this problem every year, I founded a Hong Kong-based society at my university, aiming to connect new students from Hong Kong with current students and to help ease new students into that transition smoothly. We reached out to new students at the beginning of the summer holiday, utilising social media and the university's admission team to make connections. We were able to assist new students in a number of ways, such as looking for nearby housing options for those who weren't able to secure campus accommodation, organising coffee meetups while in Hong Kong also facilitated new students performing relationships that could continue after their move to London. After the first year, I elected a new committee to ensure that the commitment towards supporting new students would be continued and my efforts in establishing the society definitely paid off knowing that future students would be adequately supported. I've attempted to use the star technique here. And you can tell. Out. It's much better structured was, than my yeah. previous ones. You've read my mind completely with that. This answer screams good structure. It's, <laughs> it's really good. You've talked about the problem and you do it in a really concise way as well. It's You don't kind of use the flowery language that you were using six months mm -hmm. ago in your previous applications. You just go straight to the point what's the issue you know coming from hong kong to london was a daunting experience not having really, like friendships or knowing anyone connections that's difficult and the examples that you give as well you didn't just say oh i started a society at university and left it at that you really talked about not only what did you do for the society but what did you do what did you do after the year had finished and you elected a new committee etc just to make sure the efforts had increased i think it's a great answer um if you wanted to take it a bit further you could have perhaps linked it to the firm that you're applying to mm -hmm. but that's just more, maybe more of like a bonus point i would really go i guess focus on actually answering the question and if uh, I'm, I'm assuming for example you didn't have enough words yeah. to i guess write anything further which is completely fine but if you do find yourself having a couple of like spare words left over to fit in another sentence that could relate to the firm that could take your answer to the next level and i think this is also an example of how you can just use an experience from everyday life to yeah. answer these sorts of questions. Well, thanks very much, Simran, no for worries. joining me today and weighing in on my applications. I hope that you all found that useful. We're also filming a video for Simran's channel, which is going to be up now. So make sure you guys go check that out. Thank you for tuning in. If you've learned something new from this, make sure you hit the like button down below and I will see you in another video very soon. You can see. <laughs> Okay, wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. I'm ready, I'm ready.